Hello, welcome to SOS, Success on Sunday. And what we try to do is, every Sunday I present you a new concept, a new tool that makes you hopefully more successful in life. And then you have the whole week, or the following weeks, to practice it and to implement it in your daily routines. So today we start with a very important tool. I think it's a very simple tool, but highly effective. It's called the Critical Thinking Success Chain, and I developed it a little while ago uh, based on my experience and when I was writing a book called Success Through Critical Thinking. It's one of the first concepts that I recommend to use. It's very simple. It's based on the understanding and, I'm, and on my observation that most unsuccessful people are only unsuccessful for one simple reason. They do not think. They do not uh, employ good analysis. And therefore, every decision they make cannot be good because if the analysis is not good, you cannot make good decisions. And that's very important because only good decisions make you more successful in life. So let's look at the concept, three steps. We have to do better analysis. And then we make automatically better decisions. We cannot make good decisions if we have very poor analysis and we don't get the right facts. And then automatically, over time, we will achieve better life outcomes. So what does it mean to make better analysis? Um, it's very simple. I mean, there are three or four things that you can automatically do. And it doesn't take rocket science. First of all, employ critical thinking. Do not follow the herd employ your own thinking. If you make an investment, do not do the investment because somebody else said it's a good one. It's your money. You should invest it too. You should ask critical questions. Ask another person. Um, if you make a consequential decision about your career, don't do what everybody else does. Just do your analysis. Is that the right move? And um, then, very important, Take the other side. And that's a simple step, but a lot of people do not do that. You know, if you're convinced that a certain decision or a certain analysis is right, just go on the other side and just pretend you are the one who takes the opposite argument. So what would you say? Take the other perspective or take a third person perspective. It's very important that you're not just looking at a problem from one side. And then, very, very important, understand basic neuroscience. And we cannot go into that much detail uh, in this very important point, but we will, over time, in the next uh, editions of SOS, Success on Sunday, we will spend some time on it. But the first thing I want to tell you is be cautious when you think. Don't assume that your brain is a computer that makes rational decisions. It doesn't. Our brain has been trained to make decisions based on the evolution, and the evolution was to survive. It was not to make good business decisions, investment decisions, career decisions. And also, our brain is easily to deceive. And you may have heard about biases, that certain biases do not lead to rational um, decisions. So, for example, there's one bias that we like to extrapolate the recent past into the future. So, if the stock market was good in the recent past or the past years, we automatically think it's going to be good in the future. If our life was good in the past, we automatically assume it will be in the future too. Uh, that's one of more than 50 biases. And here's the thing, you have to be careful because when you interact in the real world with big companies or social media, for example, social media is based on neuroscience. They know how they can trick you, to hook you, to spend more time there. They know how your reward center in the brain works, and so they can basically derail your thinking, and you do things that are not good for you, but they are good for the social media company. They want you to spend most of your time on a certain social media platform. 
So they are aware of all these deficiencies of our brain. So we're gonna talk more about it, but the one thing is, do never assume that your brain always makes rational decisions. It's very subjective. There's actually one branch in neuroscience um, that is called uh, radical constructivism. And uh, Paul Watzlawick from Stanford University was a very um, famous um, supporter of this idea. And they basically claim there is no reality. Everything is kind of like our own subjective um, perception. So how I see reality is probably different from how you see it or somebody in your family sees it because our brains put in a lot of our subjective experiences and then put together a picture that we call reality. So very important, again, critical thinking, take different perspectives and be aware that your brain can easily be derailed. So now one thing is very important and that's what I ob observed in the past so many times with successful and unsuccessful people. So when you have these three steps, and I put another step here, implementation. So you first have the analysis, then you make the decision, and then you implement the decision. There's a pattern, and that pattern is very interesting. Successful people have a pattern that analysis is slow, decision making is slow, and implementation is fast, because they know what they're doing, and then implementation can go at lightning speed. Now, unsuccessful people are the opposite. Unsuccessful people do very fast analysis. Yeah, I know, I know, I, I, I do this and I, I researched it and I come very quickly to a decision and the decision-making process is fast and what happens in implementation? They come to a standstill because they realize, oops, we made some mistake. Our decision doesn't work or it produces very poor results. So very important assume or adopt the pattern of slow, slow, fast, and not fast, fast, standstill. Now, a last thing that I want to mention. Critical thinking and doing good analysis is a very strenuous task. So you only want to reserve it for decisions that you make that are really consequential in your life, that are very important. So, for example, when you do a big investment decision, you know, that's a consequential and important decision. There you should employ critical thinking. But then I see sometimes people, they go in a restaurant, they make some investment decisions or career decisions relatively quickly. And I mean also that they stay in their career, they don't spend a lot of time analyzing could there be a better career or a better employer. No, they just go every day, they don't think about their career, they go back to their job for years, even though they might not be very happy. But then, a very unimportant decision in their life, they spend a lot of time on. So for example, the last point on this uh, whiteboard, when they go to a restaurant, they ask, 25 questions about the menu, right? So I'm making an extreme, but I have observed these cases, right? So the world doesn't come to an end if you make a fast decision in a restaurant, but the world can be in deep trouble for you if you make an important decision and you don't follow the slow, slow, fast pattern, because then you can get really in trouble. So this is it for SOS, success on Sunday. Please, next week, what I want you to do is, first of all, pay attention. Are the decisions that you are making, are they important or not important? Are they consequential, meaning they have big consequences for your future life, or are they irrelevant, like ordering from a restaurant menu? If you have the time, of course, you can ask the waiter or the waitress a lot of questions, but make sure consequential decisions, important decisions, need better analysis to make better decisions and to be successful. Please, practice this next week, and every time you make a consequential decision, ask yourself, is the analysis up to the standard that I can comf comfortably 
come to the decision-making uh, stage. The last thing, when I work with very successful CEOs and top managers um, in consulting or investment banking, there's one thing I always see, and many people are not aware of this. Top CEOs are not very fast when it comes to analysis. They ask you hundreds of questions, and if they're not sat satisfied with a consultant's answer, they say, well, let's wait, come back next week, with the answers to my questions, and then maybe I make a decision. It's not a bad thing to slow down, to be slow when it comes to analysis and decision making. You can increase the speed when it comes to implementation, but not when you have doubts in the stage of thinking and analysis. Thank you very much, and I see you again next Sunday.